Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us today. I wanted to talk with you first, Dr. Porchide. If you'll set the medical platform, tell us about the severity of asthma and why so many people suffering. You know, it's really an, a difficult question to answer. There are 26 million people who have asthma in the United States. And while we saw the numbers increasing for the past decade, recently we've seen it level off and maybe even go down a little bit. So that's good news. But unfortunately, about 10% of those 26 million people have severe asthma. And that's asthma that affects their day-to-day -day lives, causing terrible symptoms of cough, shortness of breath, and nighttime awakenings. If I could ask you, Donna, you're an asthma sufferer. Tell us about how it is to live with asthma. You know, asthma is very debilitating, uh, especially severe asthma. It's changed my whole life around. I had to... Uh, discontinue doing all the things I love to do in life and I'm a very active person um, and because of any type of ex you know exercise or activity uh, I would have exacerbations um, and some which would uh, you know I would end up in the hospital uh, despite all the you know medications that I was on and you know it just wasn't controlled at that point Doctor, let me ask you, she said it wasn't controlled, so that tells me maybe she's found a way to get it controlled through medication? Well, that's exactly right. So Donna had to go through a process where she worked with her physician to, to understand what the triggers were and then to try different combinations of medications to find what works best for her. And it can be frustrating for patients not to go into the doctor and have an answer that day and feel better the next day. It can take months or even a year to, to work out the best regimen. But you have to persevere, work with the doctor. You know, they're the coach, they make the game plan, but you're the one who has to execute it. Well, Dr. Forsythe, let me ask you, it seems like medicine, I believe we're in, in, in five revolutions here. Mm -hmm. Technology, food, personal responsibility, planet Earth itself, and medicine. So is medicine almost uh, customized when you have asthma? You, you got to find the right one for you? That is the direction that we're moving in. So 30 years ago when I finished medical school, there was sort of a, a stepwise progression of medications that you put an asthmatic on, and it was really a one-size-fits-all approach. Now what we're recognizing is that you know, as we study patients and understand that different groups of patients have different underlying causes and biochemistry, we're tailoring therapy to that patient, to that group. We're not to the point yet where for an individual patient there's an individual therapy, but that's the direction that we want to go. What are some of the new breakthroughs in medicine, uh, uh, and where do, they, where do we find this? So some of the newer therapies for severe asthma are things like monoclonal antibodies that target specific chemicals in the cascade that leads to your disease, or something like bronchial thermoplasty where a device is used to heat the airways of the lung and hopefully arrest the inflammation and bronchospasm that asthmatics uh, experience. Is my doctor going to be suggesting this to us? Because when I say personal responsibility, I almost got to bring a list of breakthroughs to my doctor and say, like, <laughs> what about this? <laughs> well, I'm going to let Donna talk about that because Donna is the ultimate patient advocate. Absolutely. Donna? Absolutely. You have to be your own advocate because um, you, you can't give up. You have to be committed to helping yourself and trying to find uh, a control for your own disease and be in constant contact, you know, communicate with your physician, let them know your symptoms and things that you've heard or, you know, what, what else can I do for myself? Never give up. Never take 
oh, that's it. There's nothing else we can do for an answer. I didn't. And I left no stone unturned because all asthma is not the same. So all therapies are not the same. You did your homework. Dr. Uh, Forsythe, I'd like to wrap up with you. If there is one thing you would like to tell asthma sufferers, what would you do to encourage them? What would you tell them to encourage them? Well, I, w I would just reiterate what Donna said. They need to take control. Mm -hmm. They need to execute on the plan they make with the physician. We know that patients only take their medications about half the time that they're supposed to. We also know that they tend not to want to think of themselves as sick and they want to please their doctors, so they often under-report their symptoms. They need to be open and honest with their physician so that the doctor can come up with the best changes in that therapy. That's the best prescription I've heard in a long time, Dr. Yes. Fossa. Thank you so very much. Is there a place, once again, on the web that my audience yeah. can go and look up some information? So I would recommend asthma.com, A-S-T-H-M-A dot com. I want to thank you, Dr. Fawcett, and I want to thank you too much, Donna. I'm so glad you're better. Thank you for joining me on the Valder BB Show. Thank Thanks, you Valder. so much, Valder.